YouTube, what is good? Today we are continuing our Lightroom Master Course. In this week's video, we are going over color and color theory, and this is probably the most important video in the whole series. Color in photography is a way to invoke emotion as well as make your work stand out. Many people who are photographers mostly get into just shoot in pictures and that doesn't apply any color edits. So once you learn how to use color theory and you apply color to your photo, you can really start to get a consistent body of work and make your work start to stand out. If you haven't seen the previous two Lightroom videos, please go check them out. They're really helpful in mastering light and local edits, and they're super helpful for this course in understanding some of the terms that I'm going to be using. So following this episode, we are going to go into the final two episodes of the series, which is going to go over profile corrections, presets, and exporting your photos for the highest quality. So make sure you subscribe down below to stay tuned and hit the bell so you know when the latest episode comes out. Color theory and invoking emotion through color is something we can easily spend hours and hours on, but in order to keep this video short and sweet, I'm just going to go over a general view of the color schemes and the general emotions that are invoked through color, but if you're going to be using a primary color or a primary color scheme, then I definitely recommend doing more research into that because you want to know how you're going to invoke emotion into your viewers. With all that being said, let's hop into the computer and jump right into color theory. The first tool that I want to show you guys is Adobe Color, and you could find it at this website right here. This is a super helpful look into the multiple color schemes that you can use, and Adobe is actually a very good website because it gives you the actual color values, so if you want to import these into Photoshop, you definitely can. In Lightroom, I don't think you can import certain hex codes, but this is a good tool to use when you eventually do get to Photoshop. So the first color scheme that we have that Adobe likes to call color harmony rules is the analogous color scheme, and this is all colors in the same general area. So if you select the circle here that has a triangle, you can go ahead and drag this around and see the many types of color schemes that you would get all within the analogous color scheme. So if you really wanted to use punchy greens, you can pull this all the way out. If you wanted to use more muted greens, you can pull this in, and then you could go all over going with blues, purples, reds, oranges and reds, yellows and oranges. The color schemes are definitely unlimited, and I definitely like the analogous color scheme. It's definitely used in some movies when you want to invoke like a feeling of warmth or a feeling of coldness. So usually you'll see this in yellow or blue, but you can definitely get away with using it in other areas such as purple or green. You just have to be a little more creative. So one thing to note about the analogous color scheme is they use colors that are similar in hue, but not exactly the same, but then they vary in their saturation and their luminance. The monochromatic scheme uses the exact same hue, but it varies in their saturation and luminance. So you can see here, we just have one line, but you could see that the colors are different because they're changing their saturation and their luminance values, which gives you multiple different colors. This is very similar to the analogous color scheme, except it's definitely more well-defined and pinpointed. So this is kind of harder to use because you really have to tone in those certain colors. But I definitely think if you can get away with this, it is a very powerful color scheme to invoke a certain emotion in one color. The triad color scheme is a nice split color scheme. You can see here that it is split between three colors. And as you pull these away, you have colors on the opposite sides of the color wheels here. So you can definitely go ahead and pick three different colors. And usually if you're using the triad color scheme, you would probably pick two dominant colors and then use a little bit of the third color. You usually don't use all three in a perfect split. You would probably use a little bit of pink and then a lot of blue and yellow or a lot of pink and blue and then just a little bit of yellow. So that's one thing to know about the triad color scheme. The complementary color scheme is one of the most simple as it gets. As you can see, this is basically what people know as like the teal and orange tones as you can see here. This is commonly used in cinematic movies. It's kind of an overplayed thing, but it's definitely still nice to get these tones. I definitely use these tones in my photos. It's very simple. It's very pleasing to the eyes. These colors contrast very nicely. You can see there's yellow and blue. We can go further and I know a lot of people, including myself, like to use green and red. More so probably on the muted side, but green and red definitely goes very well together. 
and then there's just an unlimited amount of possibilities that you could get in the complementary color scheme also. The split complementary color scheme is very similar to the complementary and the triad color schemes, but instead of having these completely split apart, they're more so closer together, so you're still getting that complementary color in like the average of your colors, but you're not actually using that exact complementary color. So if you're using orange again, you could see we get a little bit more of that tealish green and those darker blues. And then if we went over to our dark blues, we can get more yellows and reds. And then going off of that, you have the double split complementary, which is very similar to that, except now you're split in both sides. And this is definitely interesting. It gives you a more wider range, which I think is good for photos because sometimes you don't want to condense your color scheme so much. So the double splint complementary means you still want to get those complementary colors, but you don't want to get them exactly split apart. So this is nice to have a wider range of colors, but still have that complementary tones. The square color scheme is exactly how it says. You're just using these four corners. This is not something I have ever used or seen many people use, but I'm sure there's plenty of examples if I actually did research, but it's not a color scheme that I'm interested in, so I haven't done too much research into it. The compound color scheme is another interesting one. This one is using more stuff in that analogous color scheme. It's all on the same side. They're very similar, I would say, but basically it's another variation of the analogous color scheme. So it's just a little more complex, not something I use, so I'm not too familiar with this one. And then shades, as you might guess, is the same hue and saturation, but now you're just changing the luminance value of these. So you can see that this is a very pinpointed color, but now you're just changing these specific luminance values to get different shades. And that's very nice. And just remember with shades, that's definitely determined by light. So that is only changed in the luminance value. The color schemes that you're gonna use just because they're more easy to put into your photos are the analogous color scheme, the complementary, split complementary, the double split complementary, because these go over a more wider range of colors, but they still give you that ability to crush your colors into a similar color scheme, which makes it look very cinematic and can give you a very special look. So now that we've learned all of these color schemes, we may be wondering how do we actually get this into our photos? So let's hop into Lightroom and see how we can apply these to our photos. So we're not quite at photos yet, but this is a color wheel and I wanna show you how the panels in Lightroom actually affect a color wheel because this is very helpful in learning how to condense your colors and widen your colors when you're editing. So the first tab we're gonna to go to is the basic tab, which is something we've learned a lot about. We have learned how to color correct with temperature, but now we're gonna learn how to actually color grade with temperature if we wanted to. As you can see, if we shift these to the yellows, all of these colors get a little more yellow into them and we are really crunching our color wheel into the yellow color scheme. So this is what the color wheel looked like before and then if we put all those yellows in, you can see what it looks like after. We're definitely condensing our color wheel here. You can see a lot of the blues are gone and a lot more of the tones are in that yellow green range. So if we wanted to go for that analogous color scheme, this is a good way to start if we wanted to be in that yellow range. And similarly, if we bring this all the way to the blue side, you can see we're definitely getting an analogous color scheme here with all of these blues. We're basically turning all of our colors in the color wheel, which would be present in our photo, and then turning them all to blue. And obviously, this is not something we can do to every photo. This will leave some weird side effects, but it's a way to learn how temperature can affect all of the colors in your photo. And then similarly for green, we can add a lot of green and we can add a lot of magenta and you can see how those affect the color wheel respectively. And then a quick overview of vibrance and saturation again, just because these are very important for color. Saturation, like I said before, is a dumb color edit. It just boosts the color of everything in the photo. And as you can see, everything is very saturated now. And then Vibrance is a little more smarter. It tries to brighten up and add more saturation to the tones that aren't exactly colored already. So as we add Vibrance, you can see that some of the colors on the outside of the wheel are boosted up, but the colors inside the wheel aren't as, as affected as much. So if we turn on and off this wheel, you can see Vibrance really only affects the outside, which is why I prefer to use Vibrance. It kind of condenses your color wheel and doesn't oversaturate certain areas of your photo. So the first new tab that we're learning today is the HSL tab, and this is right here. And this stands for hue, saturation, and luminance. 
So hue saturation and luminance can be viewed all at once like this, but for the purpose of learning, we're just gonna go one by one in these tabs, which you could click here at the top to go to a specific one. So the first tab that we're gonna start off with is the hue tab, and hue is basically the actual color that is in the photo. As you can see, these pixels are red, these pixels are orange, these pixels are yellow, et cetera, et cetera. And all of these blocks of color can be a mix of multiple hues. Over here, this is probably a mix of red and magenta. And over here is probably a mix of blue and green. So not everything has to be one hue. It can be multiple hues. So as we look over here, we have red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purple, magenta. Those are the hues that can be shifted inside of Lightroom. And we can go and basically shift the original tone of this hue to one side or the other. And you can see which color you're shifting these to by the way this bar looks in Lightroom. So this red, which is a natural red at first, you can shift more to a pinkish red or you can shift to an orange. And you can see this affects the color wheel. And now if we wanted to go for an orange color scheme, you can see how we can begin to do that by taking our reds and pushing them into the orange. Now we have way more orange than we started with in the beginning. As you can see, orange we can also change. We could bring this more to the red or bring this more to the yellows. But we're just going to leave this here as I'm going to show you if we wanted to more so condense our oranges, we can take the yellow and instead of pulling this to the green, we can pull this more so to the orange. And now you can see we went from having a very small sliver of orange in our color wheel to having almost half of the wheel completely orange. Now there are some side effects to doing this. As you can see, we're now getting some significant jumps in the hue. From here to here, we can see that there is a weird color shift. It's going from an orange to a very strong reddish and that kind of is a standout you will see that in your photo in the form of fringe in and color fringe in and it's something that can be avoided if you're more careful with editing your colors but if you're just kind of pulling these over to the hundreds you can start to see some weird colors inside your photo in terms of this color fringe in so it's something to watch out for and we'll go over that when we get into editing the actual photos so going more into this if we wanted to get that teal and orange look I'm going to try to bring this more to the teal side so we can see as we're going through this, we can get a little more into the teals. So now in just a quick edit, you can see how we've condensed our color wheel to mostly oranges and blues. Obviously, there is a little bit of error here and there are ways to correct that. But for the sake of this, just know that hue is a way to quickly change your colors but it can get sloppy you can see we have mostly oranges and blues here but we also have slivers of green and magenta here so that could really show up in photos and really contrast our color scheme that we don't want so if we're using hue we want to be very careful this was our before wheel and this was our after wheel just playing with hues you can see we can almost completely color grade a photo this way but there's much more we can learn so the last thing that i want to show in the hue tab which is also present in the saturation and luminance tab is the fact that we have this little button right here and this is to adjust hue based on the underlying value in every single pixel so basically this pixel is not exactly red it is probably a mix of red and a little bit of orange and maybe a little bit of purple so when we click this button and then we hover over to the area we want to click we can basically click and drag and you can see this is going to affect that area determined by the amount that it actually is. So it's moving the reds a lot because it's mostly red, but it's also moving the oranges in a slow amount because there's also orange inside of that pixel. So you can see this is going to get us a more smooth gradient, which is very good because we don't want our hue to have those standout colors like the green and the magenta before. So this will help us get a more smooth tone. And this is definitely very nice if we want to get into a nice color scheme so we can just go around and start pulling these and then basically you can just do the eye test here you don't have to look at the side over here and play with the sliders you can basically go over here and we, you could see we can start to get a very similar result to what we had before except now we're not really paying attention to pulling sliders over here we're more so just going by feel over here and one thing to note is the same thing is that we are also having those weird color shifts that we can't really avoid with hue because these sliders only go so far. 
So there are ways to fix that. We can go over into here and add color mask, which is something we learned last week. And we can change the color ranges of certain colors to match this and get it exactly perfect. But most of the time we just want quick HSL adjustments. So we're probably not gonna be going into color mask. We're just gonna be going in here and doing it quick and dirty. Next up, we have the saturation tab. And this is similar to the saturation in the basic panel, except this only affects the certain color that we have on the side here. So just like before, we can bump only the reds and you can see how that affects it. We can bump only the oranges and see how that affects the photo. And we can bump basically any color we want in order to get a certain color scheme and basically take colors out of a photo or add colors more present into a photo. So if we didn't want to have certain colors in the photo and we only wanted to have basically the reds, we can just bump these up and take everything else out. And you can see how that can basically mute a color palette and give you only one certain color. Obviously in your photo, you would have a bunch of grays and this could be neutralized by maybe bringing the luminance down or doing something else by adding split tone in. But saturation is definitely something, usually don't pull these all the way to the hundreds in minus 100 or plus 100. It's usually something you just do to match the tones in your photos. So say you have really punchy greens in your photos and you also want to have punchy yellows but they're desaturated you just bring up the yellows a little bit to get it into the same saturation level as the other colors in your photo and same thing with the hue if we want to affect that whole pixel without getting weird fringe in we can just drag over the color that we want and you can see this is pulling the blues and the purples so we're getting a easier gradient and it really helps out with this color wheel and then the last tab we have is the luminance tab i think this is the most underrated color tool i think a lot of people People don't trust the luminance and that is because you can get some weird fringe in most people will use this on their blue skies to bring the blues down and you'll get some weird fringe in, in your photos as you can see we're already getting fringe in, in this photo it's definitely a common side effect and we don't want to pull this all the way to the hundreds we want to be very generous with this but one thing is we can definitely change colors so say we wanted to get a different shade of yellow we can pull this luminance down and start to get a different shade of yellow and make it a more muted yellow, or we can brighten this up and start taking some of that saturation out, but brightening up the photo. And we only did this by 9% and it's already a huge difference than before. But as you pull this up and go down with it, this is definitely a strong tool in order to emphasize and unemphasize some areas of the photo. So you can definitely make some areas dark and then make some areas a lot brighter. And as you can see, I definitely like using this dropper tool to get a more smoother gradient. It impacted almost all of the pixels and luminance values inside of this photo without me having to slide around. And as you can see, I can see where their areas are too much. I can see some fringing around here. So I definitely pull some of these back to normal to try to get a smooth gradient. So that is basically the HSL tab. There's a lot of power inside of this tab. The only issue is there are a lot of abilities to get fringe in and get weird colors if you're only impacting certain areas of those colors. It's because as you can see, basically if you only impact certain areas of the reds, then these oranges in this gradient area, like right around this area, and these purples right around this area, these end up looking very weird because of one change. So the next tab in Lightroom we're going to look at is something that definitely helps with getting color schemes and kind of avoids some of the problems we saw in the HSL tab, but also requires a lot of mastery to get used to this. This is the calibration tab. And basically, this only has three panels. This has the red primary, the green primary, and the blue primary. And this basically Every single pixel inside of your photo has a red primary, blue primary, and green primary. And as you shift this around, it will change those values and it will smoothen out the gradients as well as changing the colors in your photo. So as you can see, as we change this red primary, we can go more towards the pinks. It changes every single pixel inside of this photo. So whereas the red hue and saturation and luminance only affected this area, the red primary affects the greens, the blues, and the yellows all as well. So it definitely impacts a lot more, impacts a lot more of a punch, and can give you a strong color scheme right out the gates. You can also pull this the other way with the reds and see how that will impact it. And you can see we already have the strong gradients here. 
and it's super powerful for basing your edits off of, but it can make your photo look really weird also. So then going back, showing you what the greens and the blues do too. This is what happens if you pull the greens all the way to the left and the greens all the way to the right. It definitely makes an interesting color scheme. And then we also have the blues here. And I also really like pulling these blues to the left here. This is what gives a really nice teal and orange look right off the bat. All you would have to do is change up these reds a little bit. And then if you pull this to the right, it kind of makes a green and purple look. It's not something that I use often, but I'm sure it can be applied. And then obviously with everything else, as you pull these around, there's also the saturation to change how much saturation is in this. So this also impacts every green, red, and blue pixel depending on what you're editing. So if you change the red value, it changes the red value in everything. It changes the green value in everything and it changes the blue value in everything. So even if you take out all of the red and the blue primary saturation, you can see that the green saturation still impacts this photo quite a bit. And then there is one more tab inside of this calibration and it is the shadows. And basically you can tint your image green or magenta, but this only works with raw photos in my experience. So it's not gonna do anything to this photo, but it would impact only these shadow areas. Now I understand that this can be very confusing. It's definitely a lot of words and a lot of sliders to play with, but the more you go into your photos and you understand the colors and play around with it, the better you'll become. Basically, the best thing that you can do is pull up your favorite photos that you want to color edit and just start playing with maybe one photo only use the HSL tab and one photo only use the calibration tab, but try to get the same color scheme using only those tabs. And then eventually you can use both of those tabs in conjunction and really get the color scheme you want by calibrating those tools. Now the last tab is kind of a wild card. This is truly a way to color grade and I think a lot of people might hop right into this and try to color grade their photos without playing around with them first. And that is the color grading tab. I mean it does make sense why people would gravitate to this option but it's definitely confusing because now you have three color wheels here and a few sliders and they don't all make sense so for this we're going to hop into a gradient photo and this is going to show how the color gradient tab impacts your photo so as these three color wheels say one is for shadows one is for midtones and one is for highlights and basically any way you drag this slider inside of the color wheel this is going to change the look of your photo so this is the shadows wheel here and just for example I'm going to pull this all the way to the blue and you can see inside of our shadows area, not the blacks and not the midtones, there is a blue undertone now to the photo. And similarly for the highlights, if we wanted to go for that complementary color scheme, I can pull these over to the orange and you can see once again, not in the whites and not in the midtones, but there is orange inside of just the highlight area of our photo where there was no color present before. And one thing to note before we continue on inside of this tab is that this color is kind of a false color. It's not actually in the photo. So if you go inside of this tab here for HSL and you try to bump up the oranges, it's not gonna do anything. And same with the blues, it doesn't do anything to your photo. This HSL tab applies to the underlying photo, whereas the color grade is kind of slapping color on top of your photo. So the only way to impact the color grade is inside of this tab right here. And as you can see, the abbreviation at the top shows you that hue, saturation, and luminance value that you've pulled your slider to. So you can see right here that S stands for saturation, and this is impacting the amount of saturation inside of the photo. And then down here is the luminance. We can drop those shadows down or lift them up. And as you can see, if we drop the shadows down, the luminance applies to less of the photo. And if we bring them up, it applies to more of the photo. It actually applies to those black areas. So same here with the oranges, we can raise this up and then we apply less to the whites or we can drop this down and we can apply more. So I changed up these colors a little bit just for the final two sliders here on the bottom. And the first slider that we have is the blend in slider. And as you can see, if we pull this to the left, it extends the amount of the midtones blending into the shadows and the highlight. And if we pull it all the way to the right, it decreases the amount of the midtones going into the shadows and highlight. So basically, if you only wanted shadows and highlight blended into your photos, you can pull this blend in all the way to the right. And if you want more of an emphasis on the midtone colors, then you could pull the blend in all the way to the left. 
And then finally for balance, this basically determines how much of the shadow and highlights are going to dominate the image. So if we pull this all the way to the left, we could see that that shadow color is starting to dominate the image. And now that shifts the midtone color all the way up to the highlights. And then if we shift this all the way to the right, you can see now the highlight color has dominated the image and that midtone color is starting to bleed into the shadows. So once again, this is something you're going to have to see because if you apply three colors to your photo like this and then you pull the balance all the way to the right, you can see that you really don't get any impact of that shadow color inside of your image. So you might be wondering why there's no blue present in your image. So really understanding how this tab impacts the luminance values inside of your photo is really going to help you use this color grading tab. So now we've went over the three color panel tools, which is HSL, calibration, and color grading. And I'm going to hop into some photos that are basically going to show you how I would color edit some of my photos. And I'm just going to do it on the fly and try to get the same results doing it a few different ways so you guys can see the options that you have with color grading. So the first image here is a car on a moody, foggy night. And one thing to take specific note inside of this photo is that there are two present light sources. There is a tungsten light source and there is a fluorescent light source. I'm not sure which one is which, I honestly forget. But one of these is tungsten and one of these is fluorescent. And you can see that we already have kind of a color scheme going on here. We have this orange color scheme right here and then we kind of have this bluish green. And for me, I've noticed right away that this is basically all color temperature. So if I really wanted to mess with this photo's natural color scheme, I could just go into the white balance and play with the temperature to get a color scheme that I want. So if I was going over here, I can pull this temperature over to the blues to more so emphasize that light and then pull the tints to the purple. And I'm starting to get a blue and purple color scheme, which I'm liking. And then I'm just going to play around with this to more finely shape it into a image that I want. And I'm also going to play around with the vibrance and the saturation to try to get a more emphasis on the blues and the purples inside of this image. As you can see, these little changes can definitely drastically impact the total colors in the photo. So it's definitely a playing game going back and forth and then playing with the vibrance and the saturation and even contrast and other things that can emphasize the colors. But for me, I'm pretty happy with the colors right now. I got a purple and blue color scheme, which is definitely pleasant to a lot of people. And it's a nice color scheme. So this is what we started off with. And this is where we are. We didn't really touch anything besides contrast and the temperature of the photo. And we already have a photo that can generally be considered edited and we didn't have to do anything else. So just color can easily be a way to edit your photo because it adds so much to the photo. Another way that we can do this, the same exact thing if we don't want to play with that, is we can hop into our color grading tab here. And I'm going to try to replicate this look just by going with those shadows and the highlights. So I'm going to pull into my shadows those blues and pull into my highlights those purples and try to get a color that I like. And then I'm just going to try to go with a blend in. And honestly, I'm not even a master at remembering what does what. So I'm just going to have to play with these and see which way they go. But now that I remember the blend in, is definitely getting rid of those mid-tone colors and I just want to have that two color scheme so we're going to go with that and then we're going to play with our balance just to get those blues to be more in the windows and now we see we also have a pretty similar color scheme I'm just going to drop this down a little bit and brighten this up and I don't think that purple is as similar as before so we're just going to play around with that and I'm pretty happy with this. We got a similar purple and blue color scheme, but this time we left our white balance completely the same and we were able to achieve this through the color grading tab by going through our shadows and our highlights and we were able to achieve a very similar look. And I'm not sure which one I like more. I would have to go back and play with them. But the first time that I edited this image, I just did white balance because like I said, there was tungsten and fluorescent lights, which I took to my advantage. But if you don't have two different light sources, you can definitely hop into the color grade in and make those two different light sources be different colors. And this is also an easier way to replicate it using the shadows and highlights in the color grading tab because 
White balance isn't always the same in every photo, but if you're editing a unique photo, then you can definitely use the white balance to be quick and dirty, and it's a nice way. I definitely think that it might also be a nice, easier transition. The color grading tab, unless you're really playing around with the blend and in the balance, can definitely be a harder transition from certain colors, so it's just something to keep in mind. Next photo that we have is the Crystal Sands photo that I edited at the end of the last episode, and we're going to hop into this, and we're going to go with a color match here. So. Many people think color matching is kind of hard and it definitely can be, but we're just gonna hop into the HSL here and we can see that this green right here is definitely different from this blue. So we're just gonna pull the hue tab here and we're gonna pull this down until we get a similar color. And we can see that now these hues are very similar except the saturation is a little off. So I'm gonna pull down this saturation of this car a little bit to kind of match this muted to tone of the door. And then I am going to brighten this up a little bit. And now we can see we have a very similar color tone here. And then just to kind of go off, we see that inside of here we have yellow undertones. And I would want that to be orange to kind of get that teal and orange look that we talked about from before. So I'm just going to pull this down until we get a more orange color here. And then we're just going to boost this up to kind of emphasize that orange because I want these colors to match in their saturation because this was a lot more desaturated. So we're going to bump this up a little bit. And then I also like the red in the office. I think it's a nice little contrast in color. So I'm going to bump this red up as well. And I'm also going to bump this luminance up so it stands out. So then I'm probably going to go down into this blue primary and just kind of play around and see what colors we can get if we play around with this blue primary because most of these photos are in the teals and blues which is something the blue primary impacts a lot. So I'm just going to pull that down a little bit and then bump up this saturation to kind of get a more saturated image. And then I don't like how cool this image is so I'm just going to go in here and warm this up a little bit. And now I can see I'm definitely impacting those oranges and getting way too much orange. So I'm going to hop back into the saturation and then just decrease this by a whole lot. And that's definitely one way we can edit the image. There are so many different ways we can edit this image. But this is one way. It's just showing a general teal and orange look. I wouldn't use this as a final look. If you did want to see the final look, that is on my Instagram. But... There are definitely ways to edit photos and this is just kind of going over a general overlook into how I see color in my photo and how I would edit color. So now we're going to hop into the last image and one thing I want to note before we start this image is that there is no right or wrong when color grading images. It's definitely a feel thing but if you need a general place to start I did make a list of what I thought is the best way to go over your photos. So the way that I would learn color grading and the order I would go in order to learn color grading the best is the first thing I would do is white balance. You want your image to be properly white balanced so when you're editing color onto your image it's going to be the colors that you want on top of the natural color. You don't want to start off with an image that's too warm or too cool. The second place I would go is into the calibration tab and in here I would just do very minor adjustments. Like I said, this impacts the whole of your photo's colors. So in a way, it's good to start off here because it gives you a nice base into what you want to start your photo as. And then the third place I would go is the HSL tab and I would go into this tab and specifically focus on hue at first and I would try to get the hue of colors to be similar to other colors to really lock in that color theme. Then I would go into saturation and luminance just to make sure that the saturation and luminance values of the colors are all similar or very different depending on the color scheme I'm going. Next off, I would go into my local edits, and in here I would apply certain mask, and then in this is where I would change my temperature and my tint most likely, because I want to make sure my temperature and my tint in my basic panel is color corrected, so when I go into local edits, then I feel free to change the temperature and tint here, which also impacts the photo in a nice gradient manner, and it's also non-destructive if you're using mask, you can delete those masks at any time, whereas if you change your general temperature in the basic tab, then if you go backwards on that, it's going to mess up your whole edit. Edits. Then the fifth tab that I would go to is the color grading tab. Like I said, here is kind of the Hail Mary for color grading. It's if you didn't get the colors in your photo that you really wanted and you can't get it in HSL and you're struggling in local mask, inside of the color grading tab you can really apply colors to the shadows, midtones, or highlights and then blend them appropriately and apply a color grade here. This can definitely give some unnatural looks if you do it in some photos. But if you do it correctly and you do it at this step, I think you would add a very subtle color grade to all of your photos and have those undertones in all your photos that look great. 
And then the last thing I would do for my photo, once I get the colors all set in the way I want, I would go back into the basic panel and here I would just tweak vibrance and saturation just a tiny bit, just to lock in those colors to the perfect color tone that I want. But that would be it. That would be my six steps in learning and applying color perfectly in a photo. So if I was doing a long-term edit, I'm most likely following this. But when it comes to a quick video like this, I'm just gonna be hopping all over the place and kind of feeling out what I can do with the photo. So I also like to see where I can stretch a photo, what colors look good, and then I would follow this to do a more final edit. So it all comes down to trial and error. If you do very well just on your first edit and you like the colors that you get, that could be final. But if you don't like the colors, then walking through this and applying colors to your photo will eventually get easier and it'll feel secondhand. And then eventually you'll be adding colors to your photo that are your signature style and it's gonna be great. So let's hop into this last photo here and I'm actually gonna do a full edit on this photo just as quick as I can just so we could see how we could apply color to our basic panels too. So mostly I would probably bring up these shadows a little bit and take down these highlights. I wanna get a less contrasted image from this. That seems to be pretty good. And then I also want this image to be warm. I know there's snow on the ground, but I generally like my images warm. So I'm just going to kind of shift this a little bit so it's still color correct, but I just want it to be a little warmer. Then I'm going to hop into my calibration. And like always, I like playing with this blue primary. It definitely has a big impact on the photo. I'm going to drop down that saturation quite a bit. See where these green primaries take me. And I definitely like pulling it this way. And then these red primaries, I usually don't play around with too much, but I will take it down a little bit. Like I said, on these raw photos, you can play with the shadows and add tints. And you can see it definitely drastically impacts the photo. And I definitely think you get like a film look from this, but you have to be subtle with this as well. And I might take this a little to the magenta. Then since I forgot, I'm probably going to apply a six by seven crop and just straighten this photo if it needs it. And then just bring this down and get a nice composition here. So I'm pretty happy with that composition. It definitely can be a little better, but I would probably clean this stuff up in Photoshop, but that's for the next Photoshop masterclass. We're just gonna focus on our colors now. And then same thing as before, I kind of want to neutralize these colors. I like the green here and I like the blue here, but I just think there's too many colors in this photo and it's kind of distracting. So I'm either going to bring this down into the same color as the hotel, or I would even bring the color of the hotel up to blue. And I actually kind of like that. I think it's a little different and it seems that I just need to just address the aquas here because otherwise I'm gonna change both these colors. So I'm just gonna go into the aquas here and shift this. And now that's pretty similar here. And then maybe drop these blues a little bit to match that. And then I really want this Bel Air and the Caribbean sign to stand out. So I'm gonna increase the saturation and luminance values in the yellows and the reds. So I'm gonna bump up the yellows quite a bit bump up these reds quite a bit and as you can see it is impacting yellows and oranges because I'm using this slider tool which is good to know and then the same thing's going to happen with the luminance we're going to bump that up make that stand out and then make this stand out with the red here and then for the color grade I think I want to apply a little bit of warmness into the shadows so I'm going to apply some orange here. I'm going to bring it pretty drastic so I can see what undertone I have. And then I'm just going to dial back the saturation. And then for the highlights, I might just add a tint of blue or a little bit of teal, but really not that much. I don't want this to impact it. So I definitely want the balance to go towards the orange side. And then just to get a more filmic look, just gonna throw on a bunch of grain on this photo. And then going from last week, we could see some of our mask. I'm just gonna apply a linear gradient here. And then I'm going to drop down some of this foreground just so we have a little bit more contrast in the scene. I'm just gonna lower the general clarity inside of this photo, kind of make it a little hazy. And then definitely need to add more contrast. So we're gonna drop these blacks and increase these whites. And I'm pretty happy with this photo. It's a orange and blue look, and I think it's pretty good. I think I neutralized some of the colors. I might spend time getting this blue to be more muted, but in general, I like this. Uh, I could even try to play with these greens in the back here to try to get them to be blue also. 
or even orange now that I see it could be a little more orange so I might even drop the saturation a little bit so it's not as distracting but pretty happy with that photo it's just a quick color edit and I took this photo a different way on my Instagram if you wanted to see that but I decided to edit different for this video just to show you guys that you can take your edits multiple ways you can edit them on different days and you could get completely different color edits and eventually you'll find one you like you'll find a style that you like and you'll stick to it if you do check out my Instagram you'll see that I like to shoot with greens yellows and oranges a lot more now and I just post primarily in that color theme and I really like it it really makes me try to force that color scheme into a photo that doesn't seem obtrusive and it really makes me learn color theory a lot better for myself so I'm liking it a lot but that being said that is as quick as I can teach you guys color inside of Lightroom there's those three main tabs and then you could do local edits and kind of the basic edits too to get as much color and detail as you want in your photo there is so much to learn about color theory and emotion that I can't cram it all into one video but this is the best way I can show you how to add those color schemes inside of your photo and I hope you guys learned a lot leave a comment if you've learned something about color inside of Lightroom today there's definitely a lot of little tips and tricks you can learn and there might be something I missed out so if you know something that I didn't show leave it in the comments but thank you guys for watching subscribe to the channel if you haven't already there will be two more episodes coming out and I hope to see you guys in those I'll catch you guys in the next one peace